<laughs> hey people, this is Broken Puppet and this is how to draw an old school death moth. Enjoy. So that's it for uh, that little bit of red. I think I'll have this bit nice and solid. So no blending on this bit. Right people, how to draw a death moth. Old school style. Start off with a nice long oval shape. <coughs> Circle at the top of that. Tiny, tiny fraction wider, maybe, or you know, about the same sort of size as this. You don't want to go smaller than this, though, you know, on the width wise. Another circle on the top. And then this stage, just draw some lines coming across. So just try to keep them dead straight if you can. Get a ruler if you want, you can measure it out. Just want to get your wings nice and even. And this is just a really good way of measuring it. If you don't have a ruler handy and you want to measure how far across that is, just use your finger. Put that there, to where that bit is, just on that line. So I know that's going to be the same distance as if I go pretty much there. And then from there I can sketch up a line, sketch up a line. And I know roughly it's going to be about the same rough distance part. Maybe not exactly 100%, but roughly. And that's all I really care about. So from here, from like this shoulder bit, it's going to come out. Once I get there, it's going to bring this in, come down low, like so. And then shorter one. I'm going to bring it up like that. Do the same thing with this side. So I'm going to come there once I get to about there. So I'm going to start curving. Bring this down to cut through that corner, just like it is on that side. And I'm going to cut back up to that line. It's just slightly outside that box. Cuts through about there. Comes to about that point. And then curls up. Not 100% but it's close enough. That's going to be the basic sort of structure. I might slightly adjust it, like I might make these bits a slight bit smaller if I want, once I sort of start going. So I don't know if I want to keep... I don't know if this, I want this body to come the same length as this. I think I might have this coming down just a touch bit further, just so you've got one, two, three, four, five levels of height. So I just go like that. See? Easy adjustment. Once done that, it's going to break up this wing into sections. We're going to come across here, curve up to the line, and then curve back. Do the same thing this side, start here. Curve it so it's that same sort of point, and then curve back. Then on the bottom, there. there. After the head, it's going to create some little antennas. It's literally just like an S shape curve, S shape, S shaped curve. Then come back just a little bit wider and then reconnect as you come back to the end. Real simple. Just draw it out, do the same thing as you come back, go down a bit wider and then just reconnect at the end. And now this here is going to be a key feature because as we're doing a death moth, this is going to be a nice, cool looking skull. So for this one, I should I go straight into pen for this? No. No, I'll keep it. So if we divide this into four, so just put across straight through the center of it, 
like so. On a circular shape just here. Circular shape just here. One in the middle. Coming up about two thirds of the height of the upper ones. And then beneath it, a bunch of really small oval shapes. Coming out about the width of the eyes. I'm going to go into Panache because this comes out a bit more, so it comes out a bit more clearer for you guys. So we have the oval eyes. The nose curves up, and when you get to the bottom, you bring it up in the middle. See, so just like that. So it's like an upside down heart shape. Teeth. Just repeating oval shapes coming down to just about halfway towards the eye. And just a line through the middle of them. Don't worry if the number of the teeth are even with old school, it didn't really matter to be honest. But if you want to get them even, you can. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, so got the same amount of teeth. So that one's slightly bigger than that one. From here, off the edge of the tooth, curve up, curve down, around. So imagine you've got like a little circle shape here, and as you get back, go up around the eye, and as you get to the top, curve it out. Simple. Do the same thing the other side, curve up, curve down. Around, in, up, and out. And around that edge, just want to get a nice skill shape. Now, I don't like to keep my heads dead, dead exactly round, so I bring it up, get to a point, and then I start to curve in a bit sharper. Gee, so it's not an exact dead circle. From that, to bring a few little detail bits, I'm going to bring a line come up off the nose, like so, and from here across, connecting to those side bits. Off the bottom of here, curve up and in, curve up and out. Off the top of the head, just do a nice wiggly line, going thick in the middle, then towards the top. And that's the basic concepts of the top skull. The eye bits and the nose we've blacked out, and then you've got a jaw. Curve a little bit up there, a little bit off there, just kind of underneath that curve. And you want to make sure this curve doesn't come too far out, right. you want it to still be within this circle. Come down, across, and back up again. Put a little detail bit underneath you want, just like a little curve like that. Just give it a hint of the jaw. Now this is probably a bit more my style than it is like you know completely traditional. Traditional is probably a bit more basic, but you know it's still fairly basic. It just looks a little bit better, I think. So we just quickly just shade in these bits. It takes like two seconds. Now we have the skull. And this bottom bit, I'm going to start from here. Curve this up into that jaw. Curve this up into that jaw. Like so. And that's going to be the shape of that. Now we've got the eyes, you know, the head bit here. We've got these antennas. I need to bring in a little curve just on the side bits here, like so. And then where that touches circle, just bump it out a little bit and just create a semicircle, just so the eyes bump out a touch. Nothing too crazy. I'm just going to bring a little V shape just up in the middle for a little bit of detail. Again, nothing crazy. I'm just line this in for you. Little line just around the outside of it. And 
and bringing those antennas. And I'm not too sure what the antennas are supposed to are, but I generally always have them coming off the eye bits for some reason. I don't know why. I just think it looks cool that way. Now we've got that, I'm just going to bring in the outside of the wing. As I get here, I'm going to make this a little bit bumpy. I'm going to make some little detail bits just off of these bumps. Like so. There's one, two, one up. One, two. So a nice outline for the wings. And then comes the important part, just like the detailing that's going to really bring this out. Now where we've got the skull bit here, I'm just going to bring in a bit of body just around the outside, just so it's got a bit of a curve. Just around that. The shoulder bit, so I'm just going to bring in a little curve and a little bit off the side. Now these little bits are just really bring it out, it's just the little details. Where well, I've got these two lines, I'm going to bring these lines in. Just where the uh, line dips, where we've done little curves on the inside. Like that. And from here, I'm just going to bring in a slight semicircle. And what we're going to do is just bring in these long kind of finger shapes. Just come up and just curve at the top and then straight back down. I'm just going to have this slightly arching. So it bends with the wing. Then I can just get even that out, making that a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. I'm just going to have another one come off the top of them. Just a little bit. Where you got this line here. I'm just going to reinforce that. And bring in a symmetric line just next to it. Do the same. Is that everything I do on this side? I'm going to do on this side as well. So I have that. Just going to bring in some circles. Some circles in the circles. And then you've got this gap here. What to do in there? I think what I might do is just bring a semicircle over two, over two. And then half out at the top. And then just bring in a symmetric line just in between those gaps. And bring a line, a little circle just on top. In the middle, like so. And then if I pen that in, you can see it more clearly. So there's that little bit of body we said. A little bit. Just to reinforce the top of the wing. Finger shapes. The little ones just on the top of them. Do want to go two across? So two of those fingers. This one obviously just goes to one. Line across. Line across. Down. Down. Line up.
circle, circle, circle. So that'll do it for that wing, I think. This one I'm going to keep fairly similar, just light changes. So I'm going to have that same symmetric line bit coming there. And in between this as well, I'm going to have repeating dots the whole way up. One, two, three, more like teardrops these ones because they kind of connect up at the bottom. Like so. Now on top of this. Circle line, circle, circle, circle. Then grab your rubber, just rub out that line, work on that side. Tail bit here, it's gonna. Slide this up into curving lines and then off of each one it's gonna have a semicircle bit curving up. That's how you do the body, and then this side is just going to be the exact same as this side. So, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Bits. Go a line across, just bring that up. Those bigger circles. Circle, circle, circle.
in that bigger circle. Da, 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 da. Zack, 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 zack. Right, now we're done that. It's going to give me a sharpie, just widen up certain areas. Just made like the outline area bits. Oh, forgot to do. Yeah, but no worries, that's going to be blacked out anyway. around this outside edge. Just a bit around the skull. Now we're ready to rock and roll the shading. Black, great. I'm just going to use uh, my markers for this, like I normally do, but you can use pencil, paints, whatever takes your fancy. Jump straight in, black straight out that center. Go on my grate, just on the side of it. And this is just Windsor and Newton brush markers. But like I said, you know, pens, paints, everything works the exact same. Come in with a lighter grate and you just go up and down that edge until it blends out. Like so. Now, certain areas I'm going to black in. I think I'm going to black in. Just gap between the wings, just here. Because this is a death moth, we want a lot of black in here. Black just in the same similar gap at the bottom. Back in that bit. Big circles. Side bits. And lastly, let's 
Try and bring some lines inside these bits. And then what I'm going to do, get my black. A little bit off here. And then what I'm going to do is going to blend these up and out. I'm just going to do the same this side and this bit here. Remember, brush markers is like water paint, so you have to let them cook, you know, to dry down to really see the proper colours. When they're wet, they'll always come out darker. Blending them out. Like so. You can clearly see the difference as they're drying. Now I'm going to get me a reed. And I'm going to grab me a blender. Where's my blender? There you are. Now sometimes markers can be a tough one to blend out, especially the pro markers. But you've probably seen me do this a couple of times now. I normally recommend blending colour to colour, but if you can't do colour to colour, uh, colour to colour and you want to do one colour blending out, like you often see in old school, get your blender, get your marker, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just hold it on top for ten seconds. Give a quick test if it comes out blank. Just start sketching it in. And eventually your colour will start to show through. And what it does, just keep working backwards. Then as that dries, you get like a really nice transition. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you'll see as that blends, you get like this really nice faint sort of tone to it. Quick enough, you can do three in one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Basically six, the tip of the uh, marker will go white. Much confident, just you can do like wide sections. I'm just going to keep the uh, colour sort of similar on the bottom, you know, in the rough sorts of same sort of sections. So you kind of got the uh, continuity of it sort of like flowing through it. You've done a bit. I'm going to use my yellow so they kind of go that kind of caramel mustard colour. always comes out a bit grey on this paper you know but this section will look nice either really purple or grey as well as you'll see being a death moth you know because you want it to be kind of heavy kind of gothic you know it's dark first Yeah, 
get me orange. I have to get the pretty lids back on as well, otherwise your pens will dry out. I've got a stupidly bad habit of doing that. Got a nice little bit of sea orange as well. Like so. Give me blue. I'm going to put the blue in here and just leave a little highlight for the eye. Orange for the antennas. Get my ground, it's going to put a little bit of shadow now in the skull. Just bring this out, just in that little under bit. Just underneath the cheeks, underneath the jaw. Do a line just on the sides. Half on a teeth, little flick ups on the nose, that under by the uh, top of the eye bit. Just one side of the head. Now for the head, just black on that bit, blend that out. Shadow just underneath the skull. Then I'm just going to add like a nice red line just all around the outside. Pretty quick here, but you want to try and get this roughly about the same thickness the whole way around. Connect it back up over there. Yeah. There you have it. How to draw an old school, well, probably more neo traditional because of different line weights. You know, old school, complete traditional old school, probably it will be done with like the thick black sharpie sort of color. All of them. But yeah, probably a bit more neo traditional because it's my kind of skull as well. But yeah. How to draw a death moth. I hope you like it. I hope it helps. And a broken puppet. Check out my videos. Like, subscribe, yada yada yada. And I'll see you next time. Peace out.